is brought to you by South Point Patia. Where can you find one of these, one of these, and one of these? Right here, that's where, at the new Dalat Nat Lot Phai, the train market next to Bangkok's Seacon Square. If you have a shopping disorder, this place could be terminal. They say the new train market is bigger and better than the old one. So is it next stop shoppers heaven or are they just taking us for a ride? To find out, I sought the help of Los Angeles-based interior designer and self-confessed shopaholic, Lada. I do design for hotels and we're always looking for inspiration in the most obscure places to really interesting finds. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to find something old, something new, something beautiful, something cool, something weird, and a great bargain. Are you on board with this? I think I am. This is really beautiful a table lamp like this before. It's paper, looks like they painted it, and they've glazed it with a very high gloss finish. Uh, it's very light. This is beautiful. Oh, this makes me miss home. This is Americana, Coca-Cola, Route 101 Freeway. I think I found something pretty cool. Check this out. I think it's armor. It feels like it's made of some sort of wax finish with some sort of maybe rattan Chinese patterning. This is kind of cool too. This is a, a war horn. You would blow into it from there. Swords. Wow, look at all of these. They're all very different. It's a whole collection. I'm seeing some bargains. Who doesn't need a dress with a tutu and black polka dots and a bustier? Book at home. So the artist not only wrote the book, he actually or she actually composed the physical book and put it together. Oh, look at this. Come on, what, Kaika? Oh, so what you could do is you could provide your own photo. As you could see on the cell phone, the customer must have left their cell phone behind, how trusting. And now he's illustrating and painting him. So they change it into a cartoon character. So you could have a cartoon character yourself, very much something new. Oh my God. You need to come close. Is this what I think it is? It looks like a mountain of deliciousness. I need it, This is called a special bowl of noodles. I would say it's a little bit more than special. I think this might fit in the bargain category, the good bargain. Do you know how much this is? 300 baht. For all of this, 
It is an American sized portion. Very astute. That's the last stop. What do you think of the Lot Lot 5? What will you treasure from here? I treasure the feeling of being at home. There was so much Americana here, and the coziness and the vibe was just precious. Looking for that perfect, cozy little restaurant with a romantic, laid-back, sophisticated ambience? This is not it. <music> Located on Bangna Trent Road, not far from and Bangna BTS stations, Bangkok's unique and popular Croton restaurant offers diners the rare opportunity of being able to catch your flaming barbecue chicken before eating it, quite literally. Now if we catch the chicken, the orange and the lime, dinner's for free. I'll be flat out catching the chicken, Let's see how it goes. Now these guys make it look easy. It was difficult enough just standing and trying to judge the trajectory of my catapult to chook, let alone doing it whilst balancing on a unicycle, like this. I was curious to see how the restaurant got started, so I caught up with the owner, Somchai. The owner of this rather unique establishment, Corn Sab, is with us now. Corn Sab, you've been going 28 years. Can you tell us where the concept came from? How did Kraton start? We got an idea from the of Norway, who is a Viking, who is a Viking, and 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 who is now, as they say, the proof of the pudding is the pudding. You have to be doing something right to be successful for so long in such an enormously competitive market as Bangkok. We ordered several dishes, not just the signature barbecue chickens, and each dish was full of the wonderful flavours Thai food. Indicating emphasis was not simply on the entertainment only. So I caught it, I've got to eat it. The taste test, the all important taste test. Now, you can't help be a little skeptical when something's delivered to your table in that fashion, but this is real good. Gives new definition to the term finger licking good. With the smorgasbord of restaurants now available in Bangkok, it clearly helps to stand out from the crowd. Who knew barbecued chicken could reach such heights? So it's good fun, you enjoyed yourself? I came here with my friend, we really enjoy with food. Terrific, and did you try the chicken? Yeah, already. It's really good, really nice. Aroi Mark. So you'll get some more friends and come here again? Oh yeah, sure. We will come here again next time. One of the many satisfied customers here at the rather unique Fraton restaurant. Oh yes, in case you were wondering, no animals were harmed during the filming of this story. You're watching Destination Thailand. 
Chart your cause for all points set. Pause for all. Patty is most exciting. Patty is most index. Patty is most in point. Has most extra new heights. It new heights. Not has 30 stories over the salt after hilltop. On cool after hill. It on cool after hill. Of Pratum after hill. World class after hill. World class after hill. The design class after hill. That own class after hill. Books the own class after hill. Books the own class after hill. Mix the own class after hill. Over in your club after hill. And this is your club after hill. Vistas or club after hill. Vistas or club. The great journey of their lives begins here. A place where skills are developed and values are cherished. Where friendships are forged and responsibility is encouraged. Where challenges are faced and talent blooms. Give your children the best education. Regions International School, Bangkok, home of well-rounded leaders for the future. Luxury takes many forms. The Riviera Jom Tien captures the very best of today's lifestyle. Building on the success of Riviera Wongamat, Riviera Jom Tien will offer the ultimate in gracious living. 46 stories, stylish modern facilities, a family paradise just steps from the beach. Riviera Jong Tien, a new journey begins. You're watching Destination Thailand. What's tall and slim and can be found in the center of Bangkok? I'll give you a hint, it's not me. It's the Continent Hotel, and today I'm here to explore the drinking and dining options, sky-high ones at that, as well as take in one heck of a view. The Continent Hotel is strategically positioned at the Asso Junction, and this slender and stylish new addition to Bangkok's boutique hotel contingent has taken sky-high dining and drinking to a new level. Fabulous view, but my advice is to venture out and go just a little higher up. The Pool Bar H2O on the 37th floor is a great place to soak up some rays. Unfortunately for me, it was raining, so I moved up to the 38th floor to Axis and Spin, where I met the lovely Kun Pavina, who was happy to give me the lowdown from up high. Now, Kunpomi, the continent is a fairly new hotel, is that right? Yes, very new. Actually, our hotel has uh, been opening like two years now. Normally, Asset and Spin, we be open like from uh, 5 p.m. until 1 a.m. And uh, more interesting because uh, we have the very nice view of the city here. You can see around here, normally we can see like uh, all the buildings look similar like Hong Kong, you know. And also we have like the other thing for the DJ also, like we have the Honey G. She is a resident DJ right now. Now the other thing that I've noticed is uh, we're, we're outside here right now. We've got this fantastic view, but if it rains, we have a roof over our head. Yeah, actually we're really lucky for that, you know, before I'm really like, oh, why we not over like 300? Uh, 360 you know so but when the rain season coming so we are very happy for that because normally the people love to see the rain with uh, aircon inside the building you know so we can say like we're lucky for the nice view also yeah if a romantic dinner is more your style then you could try the Italian restaurant Medini just a few floors below Normally like Medini, we, we do like main for the buffet like during the day and during the night we do for the a la carte and also we do the another room promotion. So I recommend that for the pasta, pizza. It's quite a romantic spot for, for dinner. What with do you the, think? You've been there? I had a look. The, the view looks pretty great and it's a nice place to... to so I, I will bring you to uh, have a look that's there also like uh, to test for the Medini restaurant. Okay. So you can tell. Yes, you can tell. For more information, the 
continenthotel.com. You're watching Destination Thailand. Luxury takes many forms. The Riviera Dom Tien captures the very best of today's lifestyle. Building on the success of Riviera Wongamat, Riviera Dom Tien will offer the ultimate in gracious living. 46 stories, stylish modern facilities, a family paradise just steps from the beach. Riviera Dom Tien, a new journey begins. Nidor Kornik is one of the most experienced developers in Thailand. Stephen O'Dell from Soda is an award-winning architect. Colin Okashimo is Asia's modern landscape Zen master. This is the team behind Padia's exciting new project, South Point. Developed by Kingdom Property, South Point is financed by Kung Thai Bank and has full EIA approval. Invest with the best and point. You're watching Destination Thailand. Tom, one of the best live music venues in Bangkok, and we're here to see Tommy Emmanuel and Martin Taylor, two of the finest guitar players on this planet, who've just released their first album. I can't wait to see it play a tune off from it live. Tommy Manuel, one of my favourite guitar players in the world. Oh, Pleasure, you. great to see you. Your guitar sounds, how uh, you know they blend together so so they well. Do. It's amazing. Yeah, it's it's a very different. We uh, well, Martin obviously playing like yeah. a jazz guitar with a, with yeah. with their holes and and a pickup, yeah. and I'm using the Maiden guitar, which has a mic, which yeah. is wide, using the mic flat out, yeah. uh, and the the pickup. So I'm sort of going for that half. Django yep. Reinhardt yep, yep. type sound, mm. but with a with a kind of a little bit more I don't know rock kind yeah, of edge yeah, to it, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and um, because of the frequencies of Martin's guitar, yeah. it, it makes it so good. If if I played the same kind of guitar, mm. it probably wouldn't work, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it works so well with him with that sound and me with this sound. Yeah. And um, when you put that into a big PA. It really sounds great. It's a huge, it's absolutely a big sh sound. huge yeah. sound. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you when when you um, made this album and when mm -hmm. you sit down and actually, well, from your busy schedules and everything, actually found the time to actually record it. Yeah. Um, when you sit down and write a song, how do you decide what key that song is going to be in? Well, uh, you know, well, if I'm if I'm writing a song, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm usually looking for the right key to play it in yeah. and where the Sometimes it's just sound better in, in different well, keys. Uh, uh, there's a song of mine that a lot of people know called Angelina mm -hmm. um, and I wrote that song in D, right, okay. with a, the E string dropped down to D, yeah, right? Yeah. That's where I wrote it. But one day I played it with a capo on the second fret and it was like, that's where it belongs. Yeah, okay. That's where the melody yeah, yeah. sings, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. So, 
Um, I mean, as far as the stuff with Martin goes, mm. we most of the tunes are kind of uh, repetitive, um, and there's lots of space for soloing, improvising in that. So what we needed to do was to find uh, nice ways of slipping in key changes and things yep, like yep, that. Yep. So finding a good key to set up the song in, uh, for instance, the song Jersey Bounce mm. starts in G, then the first solo straight into A flat. Now we're already mm. a little more, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. and then then we move up to A, and then yeah. and we're soloing and soloing, and then right when you think we're going to stay there, we move up to B flat, you know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so it's a. It, it's a way of constantly keeping the listener engaged, yep. and um, and of course some of the other songs like um, "Won't Last a Day" and uh, "Heat Wave" mm -hmm, and tunes mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. We wanted to find a way of of m making those sound full, yeah. and so you do that by finding the right key and, and getting the right bass notes yeah. down there yeah. and stuff like that. It's it's really pure. It's a very pure sound mm, and is. organic, and it's yeah, and it's, it's just it's, it's two guys playing yeah, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and improvising and listening to each other. Yeah, I have to, I have to say, because you are both so amazing, um, when you play with each other, yeah. you must be astounded at each, each other's solos and he's like, oh my God, he just played that chord and oh, looking yeah. at each other and thinking, <laughs> well, these like, I can't believe you just did that. The garden is full of surprises. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> and I'm always waiting for them. Yeah. I'm listening and waiting for yeah, them. It's fantastic. Nashville, you recorded in Nashville. That's right, Liv. And what happened was when, when Martin and I uh, started planning this, mm -hmm. this album, we, I mean, we're both so busy and we're in different parts of the world. What we did is, once we were getting close to what we thought was a, a pretty good list of songs, I said to Martin, I, um, I've got this West Coast tour, mm. can you fly in and do some dates as a surprise guest kind yeah, of thing, okay. and give us a chance to work up the arrangements. Yeah. And then, so he, he did that, then we, we got home to Nashville, yeah. and we had the studio booked, we just kind of finished off the... Uh, structure of what we were doing and then we went in the studio for yeah. like three days or something I know it's amazing it's amazingly fast to, to record such a we amazing a lot of time be yeah. because it's about capturing a performance yeah. not not manufacturing yeah. one it's about capturing what we just did here in this room it's about capturing that yes you know and mm. and uh, not laboring keeping it real and, 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 it and pure exactly. and, and organic it's exactly. amazing yeah um, Young people starting out playing guitar. Yeah. Advice. Oh. Uh, I always tell people, first of all, give yourself l lots of time. Yeah. It, it takes a long time to get yeah. anywhere yeah. at all with the instrument. Yeah. Um, but what you need is to be inspired. You need to yeah. keep yourself in a state of being inspired, and you do that through good songs. So mm -hmm. learn some good songs, yeah. um, and keep yourself challenged enough. Yeah. To, to keep, you know, yeah. if if someone says to you, "Well, you've got to practice all your modes and all your scales, so you know about music," that's kind of important, but it's not as important as playing songs. It doesn't keep the passion there, and it does. Yeah, I don't care who you are, you will get bored with it. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. you need to have good songs to yeah. play. Yeah. So the other thing is, when you're working on a song and you think you've you've got it down, record yourself and have a listen. Yeah. You know, re play as best you can into yeah. whatever recording device you have, and then put the guitar down and listen, listen back to and, it. and get that other perspective, mm. and you'll soon know where you're at with it and what you need to work on. Mm. You know, That's Tommy what Manuel. You need to know. Tommy, thank you so much for being. It was a pleasure meeting Thanks. you. Thank yeah, you, you too. Bro. Thanks yeah. a lot. Martin Taylor. And, um, I just heard you and Tommy play some most, most amazing um, music. Of um, how, how did you guys get together? Well, we first met, I think it was about 20 years ago, um, a bit more than that, about 22, 23 years ago, in Australia. Okay. And I've, I've been, I'd toured Australia once before uh, with, with Stefan Grappelli, yes. when I was working with Stefan. And then uh, that was my first solo tour in Australia. And I went on a TV program 
uh, a Saturday night TV program called Hey Hey It's Saturday, yeah, I know which I'm well. sure you'll yeah. be familiar with. Yeah. And uh, Tommy, uh, Tommy was watching on, on TV, and he contacted them and said, "Could you let me know where I, where I was staying and everything?" Yeah. So the next day, I got a phone call from Tommy, yeah. and I didn't know Tommy yeah. uh, at that time. Tommy was only really known in Australia at that time. Yeah, yeah. His world fame hadn't hadn't quite mm, burst yes. <laughs> at, at that time. Uh, so everyone was talking about Tommy. So yeah, I really want to meet this guy. Yeah. So when he yeah. when he phoned me, I said, "Yeah, great." So he had a concert at the State. In, mm. in Sydney, and mm. he invited me along to be a guest. On yeah. that. I went up and I played a few tunes, and then we became very good friends. Yeah. Then, when he, uh, he when he moved to the UK, I was I was the first person he rang yeah. and said, you know, I'm I'm in the UK. I don't have any work. Nobody knows me here. And, you know, mm. and I, yeah. so I put my couldn't study. find a hotel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, he had somewhere to live. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, uh, I, I gave him my sons. Uh, contact number, so because my son manages me, oh, he's been okay. managing me for years, yeah. and uh, so uh, they, we started working together. He came along to a concert that I did, yeah. uh, very near where his, he where he was living in in England, yeah. and and then it just kind of uh, once people started hearing him, as always with Tommy, once you hear this guy play, yeah, it's uh, that's kind of it. You're hooked. So yeah. uh, I also had a, a a guitar festival which I ran for yeah. for six years in Scotland. And he, when I when I put a list together, all the guitar players that I wanted to play there, I put in. He was at the top of the list, my yeah, wish yeah. list. So I rang him, said, "Do you want to come and play the festival?" Yeah. And he was very responsible for making one of the reasons you know, for making the, the festival so so successful yeah. was because everybody just looked forward to having Tommy there every year. With, with Tommy, I, I find with his playing and, you, and yourself, it's just so pure and it's so honest and real. I, I think it transcends through your music to, to the people that can't help but have a, have a good time. Well, we've certainly reached a time in our lives when we, we can just play what we want to play. Yeah. So we, yeah. we're, we're, if, if people like it, then that's great. We love that. If yeah. you don't, well, it's, it's okay. We're, we're, in, we're, You're having a good time anyway. we're, we're having fun. But as, as it happens, I mean, we, we just played in China. And we're playing all this music from the 30s and 40s, real swing music. Yeah. And the, the audience, we, it was a, a rock and roll kind of stand-up gig. Yeah. And all the, the, the young audience in there would just go wild for it. They yeah, loved yeah. the music. Yeah. Because I don't think, it, we just played it without a label attached to it. Yeah. I think if you said, oh, there's a, a jazz concert going on, yeah. then that, some people say, oh yeah, I'll go to that. Some think, well, I'm not sure about jazz. But say, so, well, there's two, get up, two guys playing guitars. So yep. You've got to go and see this. <laughs> then uh, the listener goes in without any preconceptions. That's right, that's right. And it's the same with blues. If you, if you say to somebody, oh, I'm going to see a blues band. No, I, I, I don't like blues. <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to be depressed yeah. by it. But if you don't tell them it's blues, and they go and hear a great blues band, exactly. they walk away having a fantastic, exactly. fantastic time. I wanted to ask you, when, when you guys finally got together, this record, it seems, had to be made. I mean, it, it yeah. took quite a, a while for it to come to fruition, yeah. didn't it? Do you have a, any treasured moments of, of that recording session when you actually sat down and stuff was happening and you go, wow, this is really happening? Mm -hmm. Well, there were so many, actually. I mean, we recorded it in Nashville, and we, mm. we spent the first day really just getting the sound together. Yeah. And we booked the studio for eight, eight days, and we actually recorded it in three. Yeah. Wow. Uh, because as soon as we sat down, once we got the sound right mm. on the first day, we, we went in and started to play, and it just all happened. Yeah. We, we played together quite a few times, and we, we did some, some dates on the West Coast at the time, yeah. just before that. So uh, when we got into the studio, and we just started to play, it was just magical uh, straight away, and I just yeah. knew, yeah, this is going to be really, this is going to be very special. Yeah. I always knew it would be, and yeah, yeah. We, we both wanted to do this for a long yeah. time. We just, we just had to write for the, the wait yeah. for the right time, because yeah. we're both so busy. That's right. I yeah. tour a lot. Tommy tours an incredible amount. He's, yes, always, yeah. he's always touring. Yeah. So even getting together to rehearse and work things to get work out, yeah. we had to try and find a time where we were in the same part of yeah. the planet at the same time. Yeah. Young people start now taking up a guitar. Yeah. What's your advice? Don't do it. No, Don't. no. I'm uh, <laughs> yeah. My advice is, <coughs> I'm often asked by young guitar players and young musicians uh, for advice, you know, mm. for, for going into music as, yeah. as a profession. And it's a very precarious thing. Well, mm. it, kind of everything is, really, mm. really. But just play music for the love of playing music. Mm. See where that takes you. Yep. Now, if you, if along the way, like, like it happened for me, 
uh, you, you actually find that people are willing to pay to come and see you play, and you, you can make a living for. Yeah. I was just sorry. It, uh, it got to it got to a point by the time I left school that I was playing enough and getting paid enough money playing the guitar. Yeah. I didn't get I didn't need to get a job. That yeah, was kind yeah, of how, yeah, yeah, how, yeah, I, it's fantastic. how yeah. I looked at it. Yeah. So I would just I would just say stick with just always play for the love of music because even yeah. now after all these years I've been a professional musician for 40 years even mm. now I mm. play for, for music it's, it's the yeah. music that's number it's one music uh, first. for me yeah. <clears throat> and if you can find a way for yourself if you can find a place for yourself within the music world the yeah. professional music world then all very yeah. well yeah. Um, but you, you may not be able to find that so yeah. you know um, don't go into it don't go into it for for fame and fortune. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. You, you may have some success, you, you may not. You, yeah. it, it, it's all a gamble. Yeah. So the only reason to do it, <coughs> to pursue it that way, is if is if you if you just keep uh, your the love of the music the whole time and just yeah. do it for the love love of playing yeah. Yeah. and anything else that's going to come to you from that. And book, to learn and to learn from it. And, and of course, learning yeah, is yeah, incredibly yeah. important. Thank you so much, man. It was a pleasure meeting you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you can see the passion and the energy you've got for your oh, music. Yeah. 50 years later, it's still, yeah, still there. Well, so. yeah. We still enjoy doing it. Yeah. Thank you thank so you. much. Visit us on Facebook and tell us what you like. Or check out our website at www.destinationthailand.tv Our presenters have their hair cut, coloured and styled at Moga Salons. Now available at eight locations in Thailand. Our presenters use Philip B's organic skin and hair products. Available now at the Emporium, Bangkok. This program was brought to you by South Point Patia.